Mike. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. It's our first time meeting each other. Uh, yeah, yeah. We did an article about, uh, what, 2011 yeah. on the site, and uh, it's been a long time since then. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just like the technology now lets me meet people for the first time, really, which is kind of cool. So yeah. I, I've, uh, I've never been a guy who wants to be in front of the camera for this kind of stuff. So it's like now, it, you know, I've been reading some stuff about, uh, yeah, for your businesses to really connect with your audience, you should probably become a little more uh, visual to your audience. So they can kind of figure out, you know, who's behind, you know, the, the business kind of thing. Not that mm -hmm. WTC is a business. We're not really, we're not a business, but um, it's just interesting to kind of uh, have this technology available where I can start talking to people about various things. So, but it's, uh, it's cool to have you on because uh, I, you write so many amazing articles. I went through and started reading a lot of, I mean, I've read your articles for years anyways, but um, you write a lot about specifically trading cards and wrestling trading cards. I do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you collect wrestling trading cards? And if you saw oh, yeah. how long? Yeah, I think I probably started with uh, the 85 top set and wasn't real like, uh, you know, the WWF set. It wasn't like, it was when I was first getting into wrestling and uh, I just, I wasn't like super involved in collecting, but I'd buy packs here and there. And then a couple of years later, I got really into card collecting with uh, 87 tops of baseball. And I wasn't even really a big baseball fan, but I liked cards. And so then, uh, you know, it, it just got more and more involved into the wrestling collecting. And I remember buying the classic cards from 89 and 90 or whatever year they're from. Yep. And, yep. and uh, step, kept in touch with them over the years and, bought my share of TNA stuff and top stuff. And, uh, really right now I really get into kind of finding more obscure the oddball kind of either older cards or some of the independent stuff that's out right now. So a lot of times your articles will, uh, tie a trading card into other collectibles, like an action figure or things like that. Right. Right. I'm yeah. I, I, uh, I think figures and cards are about the two easiest to write about because there's the biggest audience for them. Um, but, you know, there's other stuff I try to get into. I've done T-shirts and posters and programs and uh, all that kind of stuff. But I think one of the, I can't, I kind of try, like I just did one on the Armstrong family yep. uh, with, the, with the passing of Bob Armstrong. And so I did, you know, what figures are out there, what cards are out there, where can people. And unfortunately, in a case like that, there's not much out there. You know, yeah. there's not because of the timing of when they got big. I mean, there's a bunch of road dog stuff. Sure. Sure. Um, and Brad Armstrong has a uh, one of those WCW autographs, which is like 200 bucks now, which yeah. wasn't that a couple a couple months ago. And yeah, it's pretty. Cool. Yeah, we were just talking about that off air. It's like that about how incredible these uh, WCW autograph cards. Even like six months ago, you could pick up stuff for 40, 50, 60 bucks, and now mm -hmm. they're going for 200 bucks and, and more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't touch them. Even the common guys that you wouldn't, because I, I I was interested in a few of them. I wasn't necessarily interested in the big stars there. But I wanted like a Chris Adams or a LaParka or some guys like that, you know, as a big world class fan growing up. So I thought that Chris Adams one's Chris Adams one was cool. But yeah, there's no. And LaParka no, one was always cool yeah. because he he has a great signature. He had well, he had a great signature on it stuff. Oh, I mean, I really did. It's such a cool looking car, like a cool signature. Mm, yeah, yeah, full signature on there. You could read every letter, and it was really cool. Unlike again, what we were talking about off air as well. Unlike current cards, where we seem to have a lot of initials. Uh huh. Yeah, and that's that's kind of killed a lot of collecting for me uh, in, in both wrestling and like football. The last several years, is the quality of the signatures has just gone. So it's not just a wrestling thing; it's it's throughout all sports. Yeah, it's bad. It's uh, football may be worse than than wrestling. They're they're right about the same, but baseball doesn't seem quite as bad. But uh, yeah, football is terrible. Um, I used to be, I'm a big Denver Broncos fan, and so when I started really hardcore collecting in my 20s, I decided I was going to go out and get one autograph of every significant Bronco that ever played and uh, did that pretty easily. And then the last probably four or five years, the quality of the signatures has just dropped off so much that I, I don't want to pay 20, 30, 40 bucks for a guy's initials or a squiggle, or there was a, there was a player for the Broncos in about 2016, Carlos Henderson, I think was his name. And his, his uh, signature was a C <laughs> that trailed off into a line. I'm just not going to spend that. And, you know, that's, you run into that with uh, guys like Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose and Velveteen Dreams about the worst. And, you know, there's a lot of excitement about the Vince McMahon autograph, which I get. I mean, but when you see it, it's a V. It's and it's it. like, I remember, this is this is kind of a funny story when uh, I used to write for Beckett. And about the mid 2000s is when the signatures started getting really bad. And uh, my editors, 
uh, said, hey, we want you to write a story on bad NFL signatures. And we're, as a, you know, as a <laughs> sideline, we're going to put pictures of NFL player signatures against our toddler's kids to see who's signature better. <laughs> so I called, I called, I made some calls around to a couple people about signatures. And it was really funny. I didn't have, this was like 2004. I didn't have a cell phone at the time. And uh, I come home from work and I check my voicemail and I have like three or four messages from the NFL PA calling my house in Casper, Wyoming had gotten word of what I was doing and wanted to know what I was doing and why and this kind of thing. It was really funny, but what, what brought that on was there was a running back for the Texans at the time named Vernon Morency. His autograph was a V. And my editor at the time, who's David Lee, who's still quite around a bit in social media, had gone to the NFL rookie premiere where they take all the pictures for the cards and get the jerseys and the signatures. And I uh, saw him signing and he thought he was testing out the pens because he <laughs> put down check after check mark. And then he realized, no, this is this guy's signature. <laughs> and so um, that was kind of what spurred it. And he's had an awful signature. And, and the funny thing now, I did an article a couple of years ago on uh, wrestlers who share terrible signatures with a famous athlete. So you've got like, you know, Vernon Morty had that V. Well, that same V can look like Roman Reigns, or I don't know, Roman Reigns, Vince McMahon or Velveteen Dream. <laughs> Uh, Roman Reigns autograph looks identical to man I don't remember it was a basketball player but I did that where I put the pictures side by side and it's, it's crazy how you put a Chris Jericho's autograph looks a lot like uh, uh, Cyrus Quanjo from the who played for the Bills and for Alabama from a few years back so it's, it's funny how some really bad autographs are out there and people sign them the same so why do you think the manufacturers allow that they're, they're getting, I mean, the, the talent's getting paid to sign. Yeah, they're getting paid. And, and one of the, when I did that article for Beckett on football, one of the um, card companies, and I don't remember which one it was, it would have probably either been Tops or Upper Deck, said, that's their autograph. We can't ask them to change it. And it's like, well, yeah, but if you're paying people and, uh, you know, they're just throwing down slop. And, and, and I get, if you're crowding somebody on the street, and you're bothering them while they're eating dinner. I get scribbling something down on a piece of paper. But like you said, when you're getting paid for it, I, I just. It's, it's uh, you know, cause one of my businesses that I had was a uh, booking business. I work with a lot of talent uh, doing different types of comic cons and pop culture shows and private signings. Right. And so what I told years ago to one of my clients was, you know, you never want to be a dick to your fans, you know? <laughs> so, uh, but what I would do to control the value of your signature is, is if, you're out in an airport or dinner or wherever it's like, and someone wants to go and like, uh, you know, uh, gets an autograph. You don't want to be, have a, an abbreviated version of your signature, oh, yeah. which I yeah. get that. But if someone's come meeting you at a convention uh, or you're being paid in any way for your signature, it should be your full signature. They deserve yeah. that. Uh, plus you're controlling the value. You're controlling the value of your own, of your own signature then. Yeah, so when, you, when, you, when you see your, you know, your, your RR or whatever it's like that, or your V up on eBay, that's, you know, you know, that's a freebie version. Someone got that for free, but when someone paid for it, it should be, you know, Roman Reigns. It should be, right. you know, Velvet, it should be that. So I, yeah. it's, I get that, but I, there's a time and place to do that. Sasha Banks used to be pretty good about that. She would have a, uh, what people called her airport signature that if people yeah. were her, have this really sloppy SB signature and she had a, a cleaner signature on her cards and her photos and things like that. But over time, that's kind of merged into, Yep. Just the same bad signature. I think Becky Lynch was the same too, because she's got that backwards B L thing going on. Yeah. You know? Yep. I mean, at least it's a little creative. It makes like a little design kind of thing, you know, instead of just yeah, like, it's better than some of the other stuff that's out there. I mean, better than Velveteen Dream and, and some of the other ones, but well, I remember when uh when Topps had Michelle McCool when she was still with the company, it was just an MM. That's all it was. Yep. Yep. And that's standard now. Standard. I mean, that's what I'll... I remember uh <laughs> This is kind of funny. I remember I bought a set of uh, the PWG cards from High Spots where they have the, they had, you could buy a set, an autograph set for $100. And there's a lot of talent in there. I mean, there's a lot of guys now that are in either WWE or uh, uh, AEW. Yeah. Yeah. But one of the cards I wanted was Keith Lee because I liked, you know, I just like Keith Lee and I thought that, you know, he's going to be a star and everything. Couldn't wait to get it. But then I got it and his signature was KL. I'm like, well, <laughs> He's got the signature of a WWE wrestler. Sure <laughs> no. He's he's already he's already good. <laughs> yeah, already got that part of it down. So. 
so you, you do a lot of uh, different collectibles in there. So the interesting articles you write all the time. And it seems like you're always tying in. Where do you pull all your resources from for that stuff? I mean, you don't collect all that stuff yourself, do you? No, no, but it's just, it's just a lot. I've been um, a writer about collectibles stuff for close to 20 years. Um, I, I started writing for Beckett in uh, the early 2000s. And it's always just been an interest of mine, even though if I'm not necessarily collecting something, just to keep track of the value and to watch how it changes over time. And so it's, I think it's, a lot of it is just knowledge of knowing where to look. I've, I've always gone back to uh, wrestlingtradingcards.com more than anything, especially to look for information on older sets and, and where did these sets come from and, you know, how were they distributed and those types of things. But, you know, knowing that, knowing, knowing eBay and there's, there's some other sites that uh, are pretty good for if you, if you go to eBay and something ends at a best offer and you can't necessarily see what it is, there are some sites where they've decoded those and you can actually see what they've sold for. So check oh, that's interesting. I did not but, know that. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, eBay is really kind of a, you know, modern era, real time price guide for anything because you can, you can see what something's selling for and you know, it's right there. Uh, yeah. I mean, eBay is, is a necessary evil. I, I, I stopped doing eBay be only because I got tired of being, you know, low balls and everything. They expected, uh, yeah. you know, to, to be, well, you're on eBay. You should be cheaper. <laughs> yeah. I don't use it. Well, I used to, and I, I stopped selling on there and, uh, but I use it to, to look up prices and things, but I do, I do use Mercari. I don't know how many people are familiar with that, but I like Mercari a lot as a seller. They're more seller friendly. Okay. There's, there's not the, there's not the volume of what you would get on eBay, but you know, it's, it's getting, it's getting bigger and it's just, it's easier process to use there's not a bunch of hidden fees and everything associated with it it's a it's a cool site do you um do you ever use for wrestling cards do you ever use the wrestling card price guide um I, i've used it a little bit i've used it uh i've looked around at uh some things on there at different points it's, it's a good again a really good reference for if i've been trying to find something that i couldn't necessarily find on another site to try and find a checklist you know for example when uh i did this one on the armstrongs when Bob Armstrong passed away and I was trying to find, I could have sworn that tops had done a card of Scott Armstrong cause he's been a referee there for 10 years or whatever it is. And so I was going through every checklist I could find. Cause I, there was that year in 2017 when they did uh, a whole bunch of referee cards in that set. And so I thought for sure he would have been in there. So I started reaching out to somebody online too, cause I couldn't find it. I thought I was, thought I was missing something, but nope, there's no, uh, he doesn't have a card, which is kind of interesting. Was he ever on any cards? I, I haven't checked our site, so I don't nope. know. <laughs> nope, nope. The, uh, Brad Armstrong's got a few. He's got one of those Topps autographs from yeah. WCW, which is really cool. And he's got an 85 Wrestling All-Stars. Yep. And, uh, Steve Armstrong has some stuff from those 91 WCW sets, the uh, Impel and the, the championship marketing yep. sets that were really, really heavily produced. But And then, obviously, Road Dog's got a bunch of stuff. But. Yeah. I, mean, I see in your articles that a lot of times you do reference, you know, WTC a lot. It's like that. Um, I try to go back cause you wrote about us in 2011, but I yeah. can't find that archive anymore. Now it seems like it's been cut off. And as far back as I can go is 2015, I think is where you referenced us. And most recently 2018 in April, 2018 for a Paul Jones article. Oh yeah. Yeah. Paul yeah. Jones and NWA test set. And then uh, I think you referenced us in uh, again in 2018 for an all access set. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I would bet I've, I've referenced you a few more times than that, that uh, if I find some sort of information on there that I didn't know firsthand already, I always give you guys credit because one of the best things is not just the, the checklist that you produce, but the visuals that go with it. The, uh, you know, the, the scans, we talked about images sure. earlier on, yep. uh, uh, but that's really cool. And then the background information of, you know, how, when were these distributed? How were they distributed? What are some of the variations? Um, you know, and, the, and, the, and if there's a number too, like sometimes we can find out that the manufacturers, well, we made, you know, 15 of these, that's all. <laughs> right. Right. Absolutely. And those, uh, the Monty gum cards, I always, anytime somebody has, <laughs> I always send them that to that checklist because you guys have a lot of background information on them too. So. Yeah. We ha I can't remember who we got the information from, but you know, a lot of it has to be verified because uh, we talked about it in one of our episodes where, uh, in the beginning it was always about like if we didn't have it in our hand it didn't really exist as far as we were concerned kind of thing but right. Right. um but sometimes we've had guys that we can rely on that were very uh knowledgeable that uh we could get the information from and now in today's day and age with social media and stuff like that too 
it's, it's a double-edged sword there because you can have a lot more access to people who probably have this stuff in their, in their collections and can authenticate it or prove it to them. But right. We also have technology now where guys are making their own trading cards. Yeah. And, and one of the biggest scams that I've noticed now, because I'm doing more homework about it, are those WCW autograph cards from, you know, 98, 99. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, guys are making custom cards on that, on that design. Uh, there's one on eBay right now for Sting from that time. Oh, wow. Of a, of a custom card design from that mm -hmm. set. At least it is clear in his description and his listing that it's a custom made card. Right, but it would be very easy not to catch that and just to, Correct. to you know, and the, yeah, that's, that's a little bit tricky. I've, I've run into that too with a, a guy showed me a picture of a, a Randy Savage baseball card and said, hey, look at this. Did you know this existed? And I said, no. I've, see, I've seen that too. And it was, it was, there was a, somebody who I had done an article for uh, the, uh, the Hall of Very Good on Randy Savage one year, which was a lot of fun about his baseball career. And uh, a guy had mocked one up and that was really cool. But then I've actually seen people trying to print them and, and sell them off as original cards. And it's like, yep. oh, there's no Randy Savage baseball cards out there. Sorry to tell you, but. Yeah, there's uh, technology is uh, so advanced now with that stuff. It's there's, there's actually websites you can go to to actually make your trading cards if you want to. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. obviously we're going to be doing the same thing for our own trading card, but at least I'm going to know it's real. <laughs> right. Oh yeah. Uh, so uh, now with PW Torch, did you work for Beckett? How long have you been with PW Torch? You have been for years. Yeah, yeah. I started. Well, I wrote with. I originally come from a newspaper background and. Uh, I did and got into some freelance writing on the side. I always wanted to write for Beckett. I read Beckett growing up as a kid and just my love of, you know, market activity and prices and things like that. A dream come true for you. So, uh, yeah. So uh, in 2001, I started writing my first article and I wrote for them, mostly football, but I wrote for them for through 2007. So I was there about seven years. And then I stopped writing with, for them for a little bit. I wrote for Pro Wrestling Illustrated for a couple of years. Oh. And then um, I switched jobs, got out of the newspaper, and I was just looking for some sort of creative outlet to let me write. And so I got in touch with Tough Stuff, at the, which was another price guide I at the time. That. Yeah. And, I, and I wrote for them, and that was a lot of fun because it gave me a lot of freedom to just kind of do whatever I wanted. Unfortunately, they went out of business within about a year of me because it, they just they were always the secondary price guide to Beckett. I liked them because they were the only price guide at the time uh, that – occasionally offer wrestling price guy prices yeah yeah they really did they they, they did that with some non-sports stuff and some other stuff too yeah. so they did stuff. but so when they went under in 2010 or 11 i was just looking for something to write and uh, wade keller the editor and publisher of the torch was looking for some writers and i said hey uh you know i'm, I'm just looking for this to this be a creative outlet and uh you know i've kind of always been the collectibles guy and you know would you be interested in you know, a collectibles column. And he said, yeah, absolutely. And so I started that in January of 2011. And here we are in. Wow. You, you, and you, uh, you wrote about us in 2011. Yeah. Yeah, I did. You were uh, probably within the first half of the year, I would bet. I think you were one of the, the I, earlier think, ones I think we were February, 2011, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That's what <laughs> I was. Yeah. How, how did, and how did, just searching the website, you found us. I'm trying to think about that. I, I am pretty sure somebody recommended you to me as a resource. Maybe, I don't know if it was David Peck. Somebody recommended you guys as a resource. And I started going through the site and was just like, oh, wow, this is really cool. You know, I think people should know about this. And so I wanted to get the information out there. And, you know, when I started writing that column in 2011, there wasn't a lot of, aside from like Beckett, there wasn't a lot of trading card stuff online. There weren't really podcasts. There wasn't a lot of social media activity. There's a lot more now. You know, there's a lot more resources available, and it just wasn't there. And so it was really nice when I found stuff like that to really share that with people. And one of the ways that I thought that uh, WTC was great was in 2015 when New Japan really started taking off in the U.S. I had people constantly asking me, does so-and-so have a card? And, you know, I always went back to your guys' site. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I, I know it's not complete because it's really uh, difficult to, uh, to complete, but, it, you know, I know at least I have an idea of what's out there, you know, and what's Yeah, and, and we looked at, it's always been a project too for us is because uh, even back then, it's so difficult. Back then it was even harder and it should be easier now, I hope, but just not only trying to find 
that these cards exist, uh, getting information about them. Then you find out that you have, okay, exist. What the hell does that card say? <laughs> Cause I have no right. idea what that card yeah. says. So trying to find someone to translate for me. Yeah. But, and it's, it's difficult to find them if you're trying to buy some, my son's a real, real big collector of them. And he has, I remember we found the, uh, first time he saw Kenny Omega in about 2014, 2015, just, just in love with him. And uh, just his favorite wrestler. And we found that he, his uh, BBM new Japan autograph for like 50 bucks and bought that right away. And that's much, you know, I've seen it sell for upwards of about 300 bucks now, but it, the difficult thing about finding those too, is there's not a lot of them that pop up on eBay. And so you've got to go to sites like Yahoo auctions and Totacon and some, some sites like that. But, you can't always search and you can't even, even if you try through like a, go through like a Google translate, it doesn't always work. You know, you're always going to miss stuff. But. Is Yahoo auction still around? Yeah, it is. Really? For Japan. And I have no idea if it's a thing in the U S anymore or not, but that's a, that's for where we've bought most of all, all of our uh, new Japan cards from. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, I have this one I have sitting here. I don't have a lot, but I have this one from. Oh, that's cool. Those ECW cards are really cool. I'm from, from, from Japan. Yeah. Yeah, those are awesome. But those are from like 96 or something, aren't they? You know what? It has no date on it. Okay. There's no date. I've, I, I'd love to know where it, it came from. I've been holding on to this and I don't even know where the hell I got it from, like most of my stuff. Um, but it's just been sitting here and I planned on scanning it one day send it to David and get it put on the site. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how those things came to be. I know that it's, it's a Japan exclusive ECW set. I don't know if it was like they went over and did a cross promotion with the Japanese companies or what, but... They were the only, I mean, those things in the mid nineties probably would have been super hot because there wasn't, you know, ECW was, was really, really hot and there wasn't a lot out there. So, yeah. I mean, the only kind of a card you can get back then in the U S was uh, in those action figure packs Yeah, where they had cards and stickers. Yeah. And I actually just, I was, it's kind of funny. I was uh, going through my attic looking for some stuff and I found a bunch of those figures that I didn't even remember that I had. And uh, I, the only reason I still had them is because they were never worth anything and it wasn't. I could never sell them before, but yeah. now starting to look at them, you know, I actually sold the, like the new Jack figure. There's a big market for that. I sold that and I sold uh, like an RVD and a Tommy dreamer. And I was pretty surprised, but those, those little stickers that were with them were pretty cool. I like. I those think cards. I have uh, in storage. Cause I'm in Arizona and most of my stuff still in California, as far as my collectible stuff. Uh -huh. um, I've got a 10 by 10 just filled with stuff in it. And uh, I have like some old ECW figures I got in there, uh, you know, Dudley boys and things like that. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. I might even have, I think I might even have a, a Nova or something like that. Or... Just, sold Nova figure. just sold one. It's pretty funny. Yeah. That was, I remember that was a trip going to a Toys R Us in 2000 and seeing figures of Balls Mahoney and Nova. <laughs> it was bizarre seeing these you know, some lesser known guys. It was really cool, you know, but it was bizarre at that time seeing some of those guys. So what's, what's the latest buzz in right now? Like what's hot right now when it comes to wrestling? Uh, well, I mean, we, we, I mean, primarily we just, we just deal with trading cards. Obviously that's what we do, but like, uh -huh. what's hot? What's, what's the thing that people need to get when it comes to wrestling right now? You know, the, there's been a big surge in the last year of the um, Hasbro WWF figures from the nineties. And I think from what I've heard from a lot of people, it's because they've gotten so much attention from the major brothers podcast, Zach Ryder and, and uh, Kurt Hawkins podcast, but the prices on those things have gone up just tremendously in the last, probably in the last year. Same with the trading cards too. Have you got guys like David Peck who, you know, have an impressive collection that are getting more and more recognition for it. And you got guys like Gary V Gary V's talking okay. about trading cards now too. So. Yep. Yeah. David Peck's got, quite an amazing collection so it's, yep. it's done a couple of articles on him he's pretty cool yeah he was my uh, our outside of our first two episodes we did with uh was david and i kind of reminiscing about wtc where it came from where it started what we're doing kind of thing he was my first guest yeah and, uh uh it was my a pleasure really to, to to meet him and talk to him for the first time and uh just a wealth of knowledge like he didn't have to look anything up like it was, it was all right in here it's like there's like yeah, yeah i came out in 78 and 81 and 83 and da, da, da. i mean that's he knew the thing that's cool is it's 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 really cool finding people that know stuff about older trading cards like you can talk to people about the latest tops wwe said or something from 2017 but when you really find somebody who knows about you know the japanese cards from the 70s or the the wrestling annual cards from the 80s and stuff that's really cool to, to get that kind of even try to find guys who know stuff about the nineties is tough sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're talking 30 years removed from that. <laughs> yep. 
that's insane to try and think about that. But. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. mean, I'm, I'm 50 years old so like that. I sit there and I think about, you know, that's 30 years ago. Holy shit. That's a long time. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's a really long time. But uh, that, to me, that was a, a when I, I myself also got into wrestling cars in 85 with the tops like that. I walk uh -huh. into a, a liquor store that uh, had a deli in it it's like that. I see a pack of, you know, 85 tops. I go, it's Hulk Hogan. I told, I got to get those, you know, and yeah. I was kind of, I was kind of hooked ever since. And, but I didn't collect seriously until the late nineties when the WCW and technically when the WWF, the comic images set came out, that's when I really got into it. I had to go back and get the action pack stuff. I had to go back and get, uh, you know, stuff obviously pre 85, but, um, uh, I had a lot of fun collecting then. You know, we can find a, you know, get a complete swatch set. You can get a complete autograph card. It was, uh, was, wasn't was really that difficult to get to get the time. I mean, you had to really hunt down for an Owen Hart autograph or the Rock autograph because of a redemption oh, yeah. only kind of thing. And the thing was, you never knew what you were getting. You just got a redemption card out of the damn pack. It didn't tell uh, you who you got. It mm -hmm. just said you got an autograph card. You mail it in, they'd send you something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think I have both of the first two sets of the action pack uh, WWE ones. I like those a lot. I was... I was into into collecting at that point, and there wasn't much. I mean, 90, 94, 95 was such a dead time for wrestling. I mean, there was no well, main. I mean, you had action pack both those. And they had promo cards and they had chase cards, and yeah. the ninety four action pack also had the only Savage and Undertaker autograph cards at the time. Yep. Uh, which was un, it's like unheard of at the, you know <laughs> yeah. at that time. Uh, then you had the 95 action pack, which also had the cool oversized promo cards and you had the Lawrence Taylor promo card. And yeah, I still got a Lawrence Taylor. Yep. yep. But, but then, they, you know, uh, then you had WCW had their own stuff too. Yeah. Yep. That card set. That's, and that's a hard set. That's, it's something that I'm kind of going to be actively pursuing now is I'm going to, I'm going to get to the bottom of that, uh, of finding out those autographs that allegedly got to put in packs. I've never seen anybody pull an actual autograph out of a pack. I oh, myself, the, ones or the... the WCW main events. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I've, I, what's listed on our website is based on people who claim to have actually pulled it from that pack or, or, right. or actually I take that back, which is actually written on the wrapper. Yeah. Wasn't, uh, wasn't Nick Bockwinkle supposedly in that set? Supposedly it's Stone Cold sign at the time. Um, oh, wow. uh, Sting sign at the time. Gordy, <laughs> Gordon Sully. He yeah, signed. That's that's right. Yeah. Uh, a common one that somebody else claims to have as well as I have one, which was a Marcus Bagwell one came from that. But again, I got mine, you know, third party. I didn't, I didn't pull it from a pack. I got it from someone who said he got it from a pack. Huh? Does it have like the COA on the back? There's nothing. Yeah. It's, it's on a common card. Oh, Anybody really? who's yeah. ever pulled or claimed to pull an autograph from that set claims they got it. It's on a common card. There's no COA. There's no official marking on it whatsoever. Really? That's interesting. Yeah, I don't and think I, I've ever. And I've opened a lot of those boxes. Mm -hmm. I pulled, I pulled pay-per-view coupons out of there, which you know, kind of random to get those out of there. Uh, but that's pretty much it. They're an autograph. Yeah, my wife. I remember we bought some comic images when those first came out. And she actually pulled two autographs out of there, which was unusual just to see a D'Lo Brown and a Big Boss Man. You got those out of the SmackDown sets. Yes. Yep. Yeah, those were actually inserted in the packs, whereas the right. uh, the Superstar set had Redemptions. Right, right. Um, and then uh, they carried over those autographs into their SmackDown Chrome. Uh, right. And then they made those special chrome uh, you know, special promo type Chrome cards, mm -hmm. uh, Stone Cold and other stuff. But uh, yeah, interesting sets. And um, I've tracked down the guys from Comic Images finally. I tracked down Alan Gordon, uh, who I've had, a long, I've had a long relationship with him and I, I, it wasn't hard to find him. And then uh, Ron Ferrari used to work for Comic Images. And he was the editor for all the wrestling and stuff back then. Oh, really? So cool. I, I found him, and I'm I'm hoping to get these guys to come on and talk about those old card sets and stuff. Um, yeah, that would be awesome. But that 95 cards for that, you know, that's going to be hard. You know, cards, C-A-R-D-Z. It's going to be kind of hard uh -huh. to find those guys, uh, anybody. I mean, I had a good relationship with Fleer, and I can't find anybody from Fleer that I, I would want to come on. Yeah. I mean, that's how I got the information from them is, uh, you know, I was like everybody else that my redemption cards in from product that I pulled and uh, I'd call to check up on it because they had a horrible wait time on getting my stuff back. Terrible. It was, they were just terrible with their redemptions. But I never called a bitch. I never called the bitch and complained about it. And I always had the uh, same girl who would answer the call for me. Same girl. Uh, and uh, finally, when they went under, she sent me a, uh, uh, an email saying, hey, we're being let go. But before I left, 
I uh, got you a little care package for being so nice and never complaining to us. So I got, really? She, she sent me a little package like this big, you know, it's like that of uh, cards, uh, you know, ultimate diva collection on both ends. Oh, uh, well. Of just unopened packs, rubber band, mind you, those barbarians, rubber banded together. <laughs> and then in the middle of it, though, was a Farouk knee brace, a hurricane mask, and a Triple H off the mat autograph. Wow, that's pretty so crazy. She, she said, I, she wanted to say and a little note that said, thank you for being such a great customer. It's like that. I don't so, think I've ever seen that knee brace card. Those are really cool. I really like those, those years, that year that they did, you know, trash cans and milk cartons. Oh, and yeah. That's, that was that's one of the things I liked about TriStar uh, in like 2008. They did such unique pieces, whereas the t-shirt stuff is so overdone. And, you know. Ring, and the ring mats are well overdone. Oh, the ring mats are terrible. But, you know, TNA was, the, you know, TriStar did some cool stuff with a, a pair of uh, Velvet Sky shorts and uh, yep. SoCal. I was wedding veil and uh, I remember we bought my kids and I bought uh, like two cases of the the um, cross the line stuff because it was just you get it dirt cheap and it was so fun to open. Yeah, the the, the product was so cool. And they had like uh, they did, you know, sting face paint they did at one time and uh, <laughs> yeah they did that with party too. Yep, yeah, those were great. Those were fun. Mm -hmm. uh, do, do you see anything going on? So we're talking about interesting cards. You see them doing anything different or unique with wrestling cards? Has it all been done? Is there anything else left to do? Um, I don't know, but that's not unique to wrestling cards. It seems that way with, uh, with well, all, all sports. sports. Yeah. And, and part of the problem is that really, and it's, it's, this has frustrated me for years, but the companies stick a big price tag on a package and all of a sudden people go crazy over it. You know, the cards aren't necessarily any better, but that card has that product has a fifteen thousand dollar price tag, so that must mean the cards are good. Well, like within well, Transcendence is a perfect example. Yeah, yeah, and Upper Deck was that way. I thought with uh, their Exquisite, which I mean, there is the LeBron James card, which is ridiculously expensive, but you know, there's so much of that stuff that was just manufactured value that was like, oh, this has an eight hundred dollar per box price on it. I must, I must have this. It must be worth. Something. Which is hilarious because, you know, every single Topps product in the bottom of that box, it says that, you know, we, we guarantee no, you know, value. Uh -huh. that, yet they're creating their own value. <laughs> right. right. It's yeah, hilarious of, to me. I mean, they have really flooded the market the last couple of years. There's, I remember the, you know, the first, not the first, but maybe, you know, from about 2005 to 2012 or so, you didn't have every wrestler in every product. You know, you might, one one set might have a Randy Orton signature, but it won't have a John Cena. And so then when the next year's set comes out, there's a John Cena, but there's no Kofi Kings. I don't know, you know, just, sure. just drop there. And now it just got to the point where everybody was in every set. And there's so many, you know, you get a Roman Reigns autograph for five bucks. Yeah. You know, there's just no, it's, it's so overdone. And, and I don't think just, producing something with a gold frame on it and jacking the price up is long-term the answer to doing anything. No, I mean, the last time I opened up a product of theirs, like I said before, they used to send me stuff every once in a while. I would crack it open just so I can have it. At the time, it was for me to just have so I can scan it later for doing WTC if it ever came back. You know, this was right. like, you know I'm talking the last five years. They sent me a box and I pulled, uh, they sent me a box of something that, I pulled an Undertaker autograph number to 10. Wow. So I was like, wow, this is kind of cool. You know, I don't collect, so I had no, I scanned it because I wanted it for WTC, but I sold it and I uh, got good money for it. But other than that, I, I didn't see any value in anything else that was coming out of the products. It was just yeah. so, everything was so common and just repeated over and over and over again. I really liked the, uh, the first year of the Undisputed product because it was higher end, but not ridiculous. You know, it's 20 bucks a pack and you got an autograph. That's okay. I mean, I thought that was, you know, a good higher end product, but then again, it's they've decent. done it every since and it just gets run into the ground and everybody's got autographs in it and yeah they they sent me a, a box of 20 i want to say it was 2018 um road to wrestlemania and i pulled the stephanie mcmahon one of one autograph out nice. of there. it was pretty cool but again you know i didn't have any did you still have it or did you sell it i sold it oh i need that image <laughs> i might have it I can see. I might still have it. Yeah, I need that image. It's, it's, that's going to be a challenge for us, too, is uh, with all this stuff coming out and uh, all the different parallels. We've had discussions about parallels before, too. Uh, well, I'll ask you in a minute. Uh, but it's going to be trying to find, um, you know, all these images to try to add to the site because we want to be complete. <laughs> uh, right. 
but what are your what are your thoughts on parallels so far i haven't had a positive thought about it from anybody <laughs> you know back in the you know, dating myself again talking about the 90s but when like when pinnacle started doing artist proofs in the 90s and you had a, you had a like in hockey you had a rink collection which had like a dufex foil to it and then you had the artist proof which had a stamp that said artist proof and they were numbered i thought that was pretty cool at the time but then every set had a hundred different parallels that had a slightly different colored foil on it or something and it's too much it's it's again you're just what's the point of it just to say you know to put stuff on the back of the pack that you could pull hey yeah. you might pull a card that's numbered out of 25 when really it's you know very slightly different from the regular stuff i'm not a big fan i do like the image variations that they do i think that's kind of a neat chase the tops has started doing they've done it for years in the other sports but they've just done it in, in wrestling for a couple of years i think that's pretty cool that's a different what, way of, what, what's that one about what's they they do a, uh there's certain cards in the base set where there's a variant of it where it'll have a different image totally okay like the i think it was 2018 there was an undertaker card that i don't remember there was just a base card it was him standing in the ring or whatever but then the variant was his wrestlemania entrance where he's behind the curtain and it's just a silhouette of him okay and so that that's pretty cool that's a different way of going about stuff they, you know and they're, they're typically pretty short printed like in in baseball they're tip, like one in a couple hundred packs or something like that and they use and usually with baseball they make them very different so you know if you pull them you get you know the the player will be you know the basic one will be the player batting but then the variant will be a close-up of him, him eating a hot dog or you know do some, some kind of a can some kind of a candid shot or a portrait so, shot or so, something yeah you know and as a you know fan of photography and design and stuff myself i like that when there's unique stuff like that in there well speaking of design and card designs like that uh as you know we're putting out our own our first trading card mm -hmm. uh i shared with you earlier and i've already made it available to people in the public on a you know live facebook live site so you saw the image like that uh what do you think of our card i mean is it it's going to be okay think people going to want great. it it's great and i think one of the things with with cards too is I had a photographer, photography teacher tell me one time, KISS, keep it simple, stupid. And if people try to get carried away with too many borders and things, and I think you've got such quality artwork on that card, and you got a space for a signature. Yep. And, you, and it, it looks great. It's great artwork on the card. It's a great space for a signature. There's not a bunch of stuff interfering with the design of the card. I think it looks really good. Now, the back of the card was where I had problems because, I mean, uh, that's where I had to design it. And I was going kind of really, I make flyers. I started doing graphic work a couple of years ago, uh, doing a lot of Photoshop stuff. And I have some certain stores and they have talent come in there. They pay me to make some, you know, flyers for them. It's like that, you know, and I, I have fun with it. So if I have a question, I just YouTube it and teach myself in Photoshop. Right. Um, so by no means am I a graphic designer by any means at all. It's just all for fun. Uh, so the front was a simple, easy thing because it's a great painting that the guy provided for me. The back, mm -hmm. I was overthinking it. So when I tweeted it about like, you no, know, trying to put a card back, somebody who makes cards just said, you know, simplicity is best. Just keep it yeah. simple. Yeah, absolutely. So, so I had this whole design. I think I was even using this backdrop I have right here. It's like that uh, as part of like a faded, you know, faded uh -huh. background and putting text in it. Like, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna have it bleed like the front and do this and do that. And like, <laughs> but, I, but, I, but then I, I, I just said, you know what? I don't, everything I look at, I don't like. Everything I'm doing, I don't like. I don't feel it. So I just slept on it, woke up the next morning, worked on something simpler because a guy had recommended it on Twitter. And then I shared it with David. David goes, that's it. That's what you should use. It's like that. So I think it came out okay. And I'm really hoping that yeah, collectors I, were going to like it. I think that white background with the WTC logo on it, uh, a little bit of text, perfect. I did. Yeah, uh, I, I tried doing that years ago with, uh, with my relationship with Tops and uh, saying, hey, you know, what would it cost me for you guys to do a print run? You're already making them. And then, you know, P1s, they just have it say WTC1 for as a variant. Right. Right. And we can never get past like, well, I don't know. <laughs> it's, you know, printing, the printing process is so cheap now too. Like we were talking about earlier with the technology, I made some cards for uh, Selena De La Renta, who's a, a wrestler at MLW. I saw and, that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, that was first, the first and only one I've ever done. I had planned on doing more, but just haven't done it. But, you know, I kind of looked at some older cards for design, you know, take a little bit from this and a little bit from that. And then the background, was the same thing i wanted to uh get another picture on it and just a little bit of text and and she knew what she wanted i mean she was like this is great can this not be white sure we can do like fading like a gray gradient on there she loved it so she was really cool she was great to work with and 
I'm gonna have to get my hands on one eventually someday. I may have one I can send you. She sells them on her site for 15 bucks a piece. Okay, I'll just have to go to her printed, site and pick one up. I printed a hundred of them. Okay. So, and I think the cost, cost and the cost is not that much at all. I think I paid. Uh, I think it cost me like 25 bucks to print those. Yeah, so, I'm doing. I'm doing it a little bit differently for ours because um, I, I don't want to hand number. The suggestion was to hand number them for different variations. I don't want to do that. I'm not a big believer in hand numbering. I never liked hand numbering. Right. Um, I did one trading card years ago for a porn star. And she had complete control of as far as the imaging front and back. And I sent it to a guy who not only was the printer, but he was also the designer. So I didn't really have any input on it. So it doesn't even have my, my information, the back of it, like I asked, it doesn't have anything on it for me at all. Oh. All she did in return and I paid for it. So it's oh, wow. uh, you know, a thousand of the same card for like 200 and something dollars. And uh, she signed some for me and sent it to me as, as my payment that I have to go do extra work now to sell it in the secondary market and make my money back, oh, which, wow. I, which I've probably broken even over the years. Uh, yeah. So I'm like, I've never done that. I got turned off by it because the dream's always been to make my own trading card and this, that. And uh, now here we are. And I'm like, I'm not hand numbering. So what yeah. I have to do is I'm not paying for any embossing. I'm not paying for any foil stamping. That's really expensive. It gets expensive when you start doing that. It is very expensive, yeah. So what I'm doing is I'm actually Photoshopping card numbers. So when I Photoshop and have a card printed one of 25, two of 20, there's only one of those. That's it. Oh, wow. So you're doing it for each individual one. I'm doing, I, I, have to, I actually have to go out. And so I'm not, I got to go talk to a print company who, when you do online, they want you the minimum. You get like 25. I'm not printing 25 of one of 25. Right. Right. I just need one of them. Right. Now I'm going to print maybe a, a hundred basic cards. That's it. Uh, the non-autograph versions. But when I only need uh, 10 one of 10, two of 10, three of 10, four of 10, five of 10, I'm only going to, you know, have those printed that way. That's it. Yep. So yeah, I've, I've, got, I've, I've got to call somebody. If you can recommend anybody to me that can print, I'd be happy to talk to them. I'll, um, yeah, let me, I, the, I really like the printer that I used. I mean, I just, I designed everything myself and then sent them off to them, but they, they were great. I didn't have any issues with them at all. Awesome. But I'll, let me find their names and I'll get up and send them to you. Yeah, just message me. I, I might use them. So I get, so I, I'm using what I've called uh, print, print form or print, print something, print, I can't remember, print force, print form, print something. Somebody else recommended that. I went to their site, but again, it's just like, I can only order things in bulk when I don't want to order in bulk, except for the basic card. Right, right. So, this I, the printer that I used, you can do that. I mean, it's going to be a little more expensive to do, you know, lower counts, but. Sure. But, you know, I, like I said, I did a hundred of them, but it was like 25 bucks and that was with shipping. So. And they're, and they're standard cards too with, with pointed corners, like not rounded corners. Right, right. Because I, I, I want to go away from, I use, I use a print company for some gaming cards I used to print. I don't do them anymore, but um, it, all their stuff's rounded corners. I, I don't want that. I want traditional trading card stock and everything like that. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you the information. Yeah, the ones that I did came out. I mean, they do also, you know, they do flyers and, and uh, cool. publications and everything, but they, they do actually have a trading card stock and everything that they print on. So it's, it's good. It's quality stuff. When did you print that? When did it come out? When, when's that release? When was that release from? uh 20 i think i printed the first part of 2018 okay sent them off to her and i was supposed to do uh another one with uh, a wrestler who i won't name and it didn't go so well she was not the most pleasant person to deal with so, uh that was kind of the end of my venture got, into got turned off on it huh yeah well i just didn't have the time i mean it, it just was a timing issue more than anything and i'd love to get back into it again i'd love to design some cards for some people and you know, I, I, with her, you know, I told her I wasn't looking to make money. I was just doing this for fun. Um, signed me one and send it back to me. And she paid for every, I mean, she paid for all of her printing and everything. So. Okay, good. Well, you got lucky on that one. I didn't. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, it's a th thing too. So let's, let's segue to something else. We'll, we'll, we'll close out after that is um, printing our own cards. Doing that's like a, There's a lot of indie card sets coming out. Like, do you keep track of all that stuff too? Um, I don't keep track of all of them, but I, I guess I'm pretty familiar with most of them and I, I don't necessarily buy all the sets, but like, uh, I buy, I'll go out and find certain cards from each one. The, there's a company called PCW ultra that sells one card at a time on their site. And, uh, they've done one of, um, Alexander Hammerstone and then one of war beast, which is Jacob Fatu and Joseph Semiel. And, uh, those are cool. They did a good job with those. And you can, they're like two fifty a card or something like that. And they limit it to, 200 copies of each card or something like that okay and then and then yeah some of the other indie stuff uh, there's a there's a designer that does a lot of those 
who I've interviewed a few times, Brian. Uh, Brian. Um... Ubin, Ubin. I'm not sure how you say his last name, but he uh, he does a great job. He he's a, he's an artist, and he uh, will uses a lot of old school trading card designs. I actually um, I will have Brian on coming up here cool. soon, just so you know. He's I think, good uh, I, I, think uh, I think Thursday, as a matter of fact. Oh, cool. Uh, but I've been recommended other people. Like uh, I should talk to you know uh, uh, Ignite Wrestling does stuff. Uh, LW Main. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, GCW wrestling, something like that. Yeah, Brian uh, does the GCW stuff. I think I'm pretty sure he does. Yeah, but well, yeah. He, I mean, he, he pretty much started, didn't he? He's the one with the the PWG cards like that, which right. a lot of people from people I've been talking to say that uh, that's what kind of really ignited all the indie stuff. Yeah, it absolutely did. That first set that he did, it's really funny. You go back and look at it. It was 2016, and everybody in that tournament is now like a big guy in WWE or AEW or New Japan or something. And it was a cool looking set. It looked like a, it, it was actually designed after those uh, 1991 WCW, the the yellow, colorful ones that looked like the, I don't remember if that's the Impel. Yeah, it was, uh, it was, uh, that was the Impel set. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah they, but he based them on that and, uh, and they're really cool. And he's, he's, he, his collecting is more, his background is more of uh, into stuff like Pokemon. And so he remembered you know, going to the theater when they had, when the Pokemon movie came out and you could only get uh, certain cards. And you, so people were trying to trade with each other to get them. And so he wanted to recreate that with the PWG stuff where people were having to go. Create from, a buzz for sure. Yeah. So, so it's pretty cool. He did, he never did. He wasn't doing it with the intent of making money or anything, but he did such a great job with those. I'm interested in talking to him on Thursday for sure. That's awesome. But uh, yeah, so I mean, the independent stuff like that, it's always been kind of a thing when David, my partner, started getting involved in like with all the independent stuff and finding all these things, uh, it got me more interested in collecting independent stuff as well. Like the top stuff was always going to be easy to come by. Forget that. I mean, it's always going to be, it's, it's there, it's there, it's there. But the independent stuff, that's where the thrill of chase really became. It's like that. And then we got out of it. Now we get back into it, we're looking stuff and going, holy crap, this stuff has really taken off. Yeah. One of the things to ask him about, uh, one of the sets that he had, the 20... 20- 18 set bola set that he did um he put he put the sets together mailed them out to everybody to the people who ordered them but then one of the wrestlers ended up not being able to make it to the tournament and so he replaced that person with a card of sammy guevara who's a kind of a big deal in aew now but the the those cards were he took with him to the pwg shows for that tournament and nobody wanted them so the set has like i don't know if it's card number say 27 the set has one wrestler but there's a handful floating out there of sammy guevara that he's made that i i think i've probably about five or six of them that he just sent me he's made a whole big stack and nobody liked sammy and so they didn't want his card but it's <laughs> I'll, I'll just him just that one for the, for the site that's hilarious like that so well, uh, you know, hey, I, I, I really appreciate you coming on and, uh, and talking to us like that. It's, it's awesome to talk to someone, uh, the tech, again, technology, able to meet people. And, and uh, I'm a big fan of like, all your writings up there on PW Torch as well. David, especially, like we linked a lot of your articles on our, on our uh, Facebook page all the time. I mean, we, didn't, we used to do a lot. And then, of course, we took that whole time off. And now we're back. And he's been going back and linking things back up again. It's like that. And, and people are kind of like, this is a cool article. I didn't, I didn't see that one before. Yeah. Yeah. I go back and, you know, that's one of the things too, is I, I kind of got burnt out last year and thinking, you know, I've done everything. And it's like, well, you've been doing this for nine years. Of course you've done everything, but people who are reading your column now weren't reading it in 2011. So I, I try and go back and dig old articles that are timely or just, I think that are interesting and I'll go out and read them to people. Then you have the unfortunate things where, you know, uh, you know, some of our our legends that ended up passing away. It's like that. And you have to write, you're writing an article about that and they're collectible stuff like, you know, Bob Ostrom. Uh-huh. So, I mean, uh, you know, so there's always going to be source material. there, always material all the time, but, uh, yeah, yep. yeah especially, I mean, uh, are you writing about every review? Do you write reviews or write about every card that comes out or just. No, I used to tops would send me a review box of some stuff here and there. And I was doing them pretty regularly, but, they put so much stuff out now that I just don't, I honestly, I haven't, you know, the other aspect of this is, this is a whole topic in and of itself, but my interest in modern day WWE is just non-existent. It's the product is so bad. I can't watch it. And so I don't keep up with what's going on on the TV as much. So my interest now is more, you know, in older stuff and finding out if WWE signs a wrestler, where were his cards before? Who did he, you know, did he have a a PWG card or did he have this or did he have that? So that's kind of, 
Or even through. digging up some of those oddball carts that they seem to show up every once in a while out of nowhere, you know? Yeah, yeah. I bought a, uh, a – you may have seen them because I think they're on your site, the uh, the Stridex car. Oh, yeah, yeah. 97. Yeah. I got one. I got a, a one that was signed by Austin that's got a COA and everything with nice. it. So yeah, it's certified by uh, it's PSA. I just PSA. Yep. Yeah, I've got yeah. Uh, I've got a few uh, leftovers in the box. Most of my stuff is still in storage back in California, but I, I do have a few boxes that I grabbed before I came, you know, out to Arizona, and it has a bunch of oddball stuff behind me in a box over there, and I have some Strikes cards in there too. Yeah. Yeah, I love that stuff. I like the the '97 Cardinal, the uh, from the trivia game, and yeah, you know, that oddball stuff is really cool. I mean, I have uh, just some oddballs that I pulled out of here. It's like got these old uh, old WWF tag team cards in here. It's like that sticker cards. You know, I don't think I've ever seen that. What year are those from? Uh, these are from eighty eighty six. Really? Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen those. It's a WWF. It's from uh, Borden. It's a tag team of the year set. Like little sticker sets. Oh, that's cool. There's a full set in here, I believe. Uh, actually, I don't want to open it up. And then, uh, you know, just a couple of those old Walden book cards, you know, from they put uh -huh. out. Yeah. Yep. A couple of those. Uh, Legends, you know, from Gordon right here. From. Oh, that's cool. It's from uh, Greg Price's old show back in uh, from the Legend uh, NWA Fan, Fan Fest. Yeah. Yeah, card yeah really. Yeah, that's cool. And there's variations of that too. This was never released in, in the in packs, which was the PMS authentic autograph card. Oh wow. So That's she, really cool. She signed that for, uh, for her website at the top. But, uh, you know, a lot of ball stuff like that here and there. I've got some stuff running around. Just, But the bulk of my collection is still sitting in storage. So. Yeah, I bought it. I actually found a full unopened box of the uh, the Monty Gum cards a couple of years ago. And uh, got it for like 20 bucks. So I just bought <laughs> it. Up, 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 it's, it's so terrible, but it's, it's so cool at the same time, you know. It's fun to look through that and you see all the errors on it and the card of – you know Sylvester Stallone and Hulk Hogan that says Muhammad Ali on it or whatever yeah yeah you write you wrote an article about that one uh yeah yeah yeah, yeah and I uh, actually talked to I sent Jim Cornette a bunch of his face cards from that which that's his first trading card all that appears on there is his hand and the tennis racket and his first <laughs> yeah. so yeah it's pretty funny that's awesome well uh again I appreciate you coming on man and thank you for making the time yeah, absolutely. Let's keep in touch and uh, definitely do some more. I'll keep you in touch on the columns and everything. And if you guys ever let me know. Thank you so much, Mike. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Take care. All right. You too. Talk to you later, Bye. man. Bye. Bye-bye.